You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Welcome to Sports Talkie, where we talk all things sports. Today I'm here with Evan Exum. Nice to meet you, Evan. Nice to meet you, too. Today we're going to be talking about the NBA draft pick. So I'm going to have a couple questions for you, if that's all right. Um, who would you consider the most versatile player in Josh, the draft? Josh Jackson from Kansas, I, I'd say, because he plays both sides of, sides of the ball on offense and defense. His off-the-dribble game got better as the season went on, and his three-point shot got better. But at the NBA, I know, a jumper is an issue and a free throw shooting is an, is an issue, but shooting is a skill that has improved a lot. Like, look at players like Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, Magic Johnson, and Clyde Drexler. When they got to the NBA, they improved their jump shot a lot. And Michael Jordan, even Michael Jordan, like, at, like at, when he left North Carolina, improved his jumper a lot when he went to the NBA. That's true. That'll bring me to my next question. Who would you consider the most underrated prospect in the draft? Dennis Smith, his handle's the best in the draft, in my opinion, over Josh, Josh Jackson. I say he's the most athletic player in this draft, to be quite honest with you, surprisingly, because Dennis Smith could handle the ball the best, and he is athletic with the ball, too. Like he could dunk on people at six foot three, and he could finish like crazy, like the best in the draft. I think he's the best finisher in this draft. With all that being said, why would you put him over Josh Jackson? Um, I'm not saying that Dennis Smith is a better player than Josh Jackson, but I say he's more athletic than Josh Jackson in this draft. He's the most athletic player in this draft. I say is Dennis Smith the most explosive. Okay, I can see where you're coming from there. That'll bring me to my next question. Who would you consider the best big man in the draft? Jonathan Isaac. Today's game is not really a big man game, and in, in, in this year's draft, there are not that many centers in this year's draft. And no, like centers who I think who could be elite in the NBA, to be honest, quite honest with you. But they could be some centers who are role players in the NBA, like Jonathan Isaac. He is a very skilled big big man who plays defense, who's very versatile. And I think that at the next level, that he could be a Miles Turner or Rashad Lewis type player, depending on if he plays power forward or small forward at the next level. But I think he'll probably be a power forward at the next level. I can see that. I can see that. All right, who would you consider the best second round prospect in the draft? Sandir Thornwell or Frank Mason, I'd say. I'd say one of them. Frank Mason, I know at Kansas his, his senior year, he made a dramatic improvement and he's undersized, but Frank Mason could ball. Frank Mason could handle a ball for like a little guy. He could shoot, his jumper improved a lot. But at the next level, I know he's undersized, but at the, at the next level, I really believe that he could be a Patty Mills type player. You don't think his size would be an issue? Um, I think it will that he won't be a starter, but I think that he could be a great role player in the NBA if he could play at the next level and finish against length, even though his arms are short for his size. Yeah, good point, good point. All right, we're going to go with the next question. Who would you consider the steal of the draft? I think Dennis Smith could actually be a steal of the draft, to be quite honest with you. I really like that guy a lot his, because his ability to make plays. I know his jumper is good, but it could be streaky at times, but I could see him getting a good jumper when he gets to the NBA. Is Dennis Smith just a favorite of yours? Not a favorite, not my favorite player in this draft, but he, I really think that he could be a steal of the draft and turn out to be one of, one of the best players in this draft, but not the best, definitely not the best. Yeah, I agree. But, if he, but like, it wouldn't sur surprise me if he, be, if he becomes an all-star one day. That's true. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah. But we're going to go with the next question. What do you think the Celtics should do with their number one pick? Because, you know, between trading it or keeping him? To be honest, quite honest with you, I would keep Markel Folks because Markel Folks, the game comes very easy for him at 6'4, 195. He's the most effective scorer in, in this year's draft. He creates the best shot in this draft, and he's very athletic. And playing for Brad Stevens in, in Boston, I don't like going high or far in comparisons, but. I really think they could be a Dwayne Wade type player if he goes to Boston, which 
is something that I don't like to compare players or make their expectations too high. Yeah. But I think that he's the best player in this draft, and he definitely should go number one over Alonzo Ball. Wow. But Dwayne Wade, though, you think he'll eventually get to that level of potential? He has Dwayne Wade potential, but I don't know. Yeah, good point. I'm, I'm on the same page. Um, who would you consider the best rookie scorer in the draft? And, well, we'll start there. I think Malik Monk, his rookie year, will average most points in this draft. Yeah. He shoots the best in this draft. And Markel Folks, especially playing for the Boston Celtics, will not get to get the ball a lot as a rookie. Okay. What are your predictions for next year on that? Uh, I, think he'll, I think he could be like a 12-point-per-game scorer because he reminds me of a mix of Devin Booker and Jamal Murray. They both went to Kentucky, played for John Calipari. Malik Monk, the best knockdown shooter in this draft, and there's no question about that. Against my North Carolina Tar Heels when he scored 47 points, he was unstoppable making shots that were driving me crazy and everything. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Um, all right, we're going to go to the next question. Um, what, why don't you give us a rundown of the lottery pick comparison? Uh, I know that Markel Folks, they reminds me of Dwayne Wade and for his best case scenario, but the worst case scenario, I'd say D'Angelo R- Russell. Because D'Angelo Russell, I know that he's not a bust right now, but if he one day becomes a bust, then that would have been a waste of a number two pick for the L.A. Lakers. But to be quite honest with you, Markel Folks, I think, will be better than him because the game comes very easy for him. But if he became a bust, then like I'll, then I would not draft someone under six six foot six ever at number one if he becomes a bust, unless your skill set is very high, like a Kyrie Irving. When Kyrie Irving came out and only played 11 games of college, he was hurt, but I knew he'd be good because his skill set was nothing like I've seen, like the cricket handle he, he got. His handle, and he's the best handle, his handle's the best in the NBA right now, and he finishes the best in the NBA by far. Hmm. Kyrie Irving, they'll never be a guy with his kind of handle, I think, in my lifetime, but maybe one day, but Kyrie Irving is big time, and that was the best number one pick since LeBron, in my opinion, so far. Of course, of course. All right, well, those are all the questions that I have today. Is there anything else that you would like to add about the NBA draft? Lonzo Ball, I'd say the Lakers, they need a playmaker, so I'd take Lonzo Ball at number two, but his hype is too high. Like, he, he, does, he definitely does not deserve to have his shoes show up for $495, because that's crazy. Mm-hmm. $495? <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, I did hear about that. What what are your what's your take on that? Do you think that that's like you think that's what like what do you what do you think about that? In terms of him pricing it that high. Do you think he's being cocky or do you think he's just like what do you think? His dad is crazy saying all the stuff saying that oh, he'll be better Michael Jordan in that long mm-hmm. and that Michael Jordan is not Lonzo Ball. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't There's, there's I don't something know wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to compare yourself to someone that great. But that's all we have for today. Um, Thank you for taking the time with me. Uh, I'm Kyle Exum. This is Evan Exum, and we're signing off.